It's about, mm, it's 12-ish. Screw in the data for ourselves for the tape. Jennifer Johnston. Dave Trading. Healthy Green Jones. Daryl Pass. Okay. Barbara Jones. Amy Silver. You're doing a great job, Amy, by the way, with you're getting the information on this. Thank you. I know you're new to us, but you're doing a great job. We appreciate it. So, um, let's see. We've done roll call. Approval of the agenda. Is there any approval of the agenda? I'm not seeing any. Minutes of previous meetings are in old business. There isn't a new business. Acceptance of community council bylaws filed and conforming. Mr. Hess, you um, looked at one through six? Yes, we had a little bit of a run, rush with the community councils as we're getting closer to the November 30th deadline. And uh, several of these were passed back and forth multiple times. Uh, and uh, in my opinion, they all now conform to the requirements of AMC 2.40 as amended by the assembly on February 11th of this year. And I would say Rabbit Creek, we just got in under the, under the wire. Uh, we got the last little couple of words corrected uh, a couple days ago. So they're very pleased. I have stopped receiving emails, so I guess everybody's singing Kumbaya. Yeah. They're, they're. I wanted to make sure you picked that up, Jennifer, because I know you, I, you're involved intimately with Rabbit Creek. We worked out some of the, the wording that uh, so it complies with the code and meets their needs. Any questions from assembly members? Thank you, Mr. Hess. Appreciate it. Can we get a motion from the body to approve the Senate's on to the assembly? Second. Any objection? Not seeing any of these have been approved and sent on to the assembly then. Excellent. Item B1. Have one problem. Chugia Community Council, Mr. Hayes. We had one council that uh, they had a few issues that uh, did not entirely conform to the code. Um, I actually printed out the email that I sent to you, Mr. Chairman, and to the clerk that outlines uh, what I perceived as the non conformities. I did uh, communicate to the council secretary and President, and I received a, a, a response from the sec council secretary that they will work on their bylaws and will address. They agreed with my uh, determination, and they will work to uh, correct the nonconformities. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's we're happy. Thank you, Daryl. Yeah, it's wonderful. There'll be an extra bonus to paycheck this month. Just trust us. Thank you. How many bylaws have you looked at now, sir? Counting the original of 34 I read. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I figured over That's the really last... go to sleep seeing bylaws in your I eyes. I figured over the last 12 months, it's, I spent about 200 hours on community councils, and a lot of that was the bylaws. Well, thank you, Daryl. Welcome. I think we all appreciate community councils. Well, they're the foundation of this town. We only have to do it in 20 years or something. Well, they yeah. have nine of them. Next time, you can lead it, okay? Yeah, sure. So this one will come back in front of us when we're going to Any members' comments? Yes, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Chairman. So, um, Mr. Hess, if I can address Mr. Hess. Um, so how many are left at the Chuga that need to be in conformance? I do not have the answer. The clerk's office is maintaining the spreadsheet, and I will uh, give Amy, we will figure that out and get an answer. But I believe this makes I still believe we're under 20 as far as accepted. Yeah. I believe it's under 20, so we would have over a dozen 18. left. Yeah, they're 38, right? Well, there's a couple, and, and this is this is a good point. I, I, the, the committee may need to think about this. Uh, a couple of councils actually contacted me and said they decided just to go with uh, default bylaws. And I don't know if that was really the intent of, uh, of the assembly because it says that they will the default bylaws will be in effect until conforming bylaws are submitted I believe so even if they want to go with the conforming bylaws it seems to me they would have to submit something to the assembly eventually Daryl the next meeting can you let us know which community council we're talking about because I'd like to identify which are going to be players that will have a default set of bylaws Thank you for all your work on the default bylaws. So we need to have that stopgap out there in case 
what's happened is we've seen some community councils don't want to conform, so they just want them to follow bylaws. I just want to know what the community council are talking about. I have one council that wanted to go with the default bylaws, and I recently communicated with them, and they were shorthanded, so I actually took the default bylaws and adjusted them to fit their council. So uh, I told them they're going to have to submit those now to these. So. Do we have any, by any community councils not even participating, period, sure. either doing bylaws or default bylaws? Because I've heard we have some that have kind of winked out of existence. There are some. I, I don't know if they've winked out of existence, but I think there are a few councils that the, neither the clerk's office nor the ombudsman has received any communications from regarding. And, and I think I'll get with, I can get with Amy and we can make a list of who has submitted bylaws, um, which ones are conforming, which ones uh, were determined to be non-conforming that haven't been resubmitted, and which councils haven't submitted any. Did you send that to Dick Tremaine? He's currently now the president of the, the Federation. Just so we can find it. If there's some that don't exist, I'd like to figure out what our next steps are. Because we can consolidate or merge them into other community councils. I want to make sure everybody's got a community council that is meaning to represent their needs. But if we have some that for whatever reason don't exist, we need to identify those. Because I don't think we've ever taken a look at those that don't exist. I just want to make sure where we're going with those. You may have some of them Bear Valley, I'm thinking. Well, Bear Valley's there. They're, 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 they're there. They're okay. packed there. Uh, but <coughs> I think uh, I do have some. I think one else is kind of And then mid house I've been communicating with mid house Yeah. Yes, Ms. Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so when you say don't exist, do you mean that they're not active? Yes. Okay. If they exist, they're just not active. They're just, well, yeah. Yeah. They're not quite dead, right. but we have not seen a pulse of them. Right. And I just want to find out if we've got those. Can we reactivate them, or what's the issue? Yes, yeah, sir. I, I was going to ask Elvie. Um, I, I have heard some rumors that uh, Midtown may be interested in looking at joining with uh, North Star. Dick, um, can I address that? Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, because that's our community council, and I'm not sure if they're really interested in it, because I think they like, you know, I mean, it's a small community council, but I think they like their little, you know, um, independence. Yeah. Um, but I do know that next month there's going to be sort of a joint meeting for the first part um, with Midtown and, and North Star. We had so, we had one before, and, and so uh, anyway, uh, it. Uh, I, I guess they don't have a lot of participation, so I don't know. Which we're looking at some trigger alert license on next to me accounts to me. Then the people show up and with her. <laughs> I just want to make sure that everybody's got a community council. We have some that aren't functioning that we just need to figure out yeah. what we can do to revitalize them. Because at one time, one of our community councils went out of existence. And now, it, it's been me now for the last five years. It came back to life, and it's not going anywhere. Because they're it's very good community council. Right. Just for a short period of time, they didn't have anybody. Well, I think that was part of the purpose of this whole exercise was to try and get folks re-energized. It was our largest part of the council for a short period of time they went out of existence and came back. I'm surprised. Anything else from members? Moving on down to honest participation, anybody else want to talk? Yes, Eugene. My name is Eugene Haberman. I represent myself as I've addressed this body and other bodies in on the us, the Open Meetings Act, and also providing reasonable opportunity to be heard at public meetings. Uh, two of you didn't hear my comments from the previous work session that was a few minutes earlier. The others uh, are present now. Concern about, for example, that agenda there. Um, yes, you note the meeting, wh where, place, and time. Public doesn't know what's going on before the meeting. I have to pretty much beg to always get copies of the agendas if you can have a copy of the agenda at the meeting, during the meeting. That's, this is nuts. This has got to stop. It's called the Assembly Rules Committee. Now, I referenced the issue about uh, 
where the city says that when I say city, the municipality anchored to 48 hour notice is all that's needed. I mentioned in the previous ward uh, session earlier today that uh, even the borough assembly is members there are at the meeting this week expressed concerns for other members about this 48 hour notice. They don't partake, participate in that kind of action, and you're going to be having a joint. Anchorage Assembly and Borough Assembly meeting on transportation in the very near future, but uh, you've got to you got to stop this stuff. And uh, also, even the 48-hour notice, n notice the previous rules committee scenario um, was less than 48 hours notice. So even those and whatever action you take is in question from your own policy. And then having audience participation at the end. You need two of them like Palmer does, what Sill does, Houston does, where people could participate before you make a decision. Now today, you have an agenda and you make decisions on certain things here, but the public speaks at the end of the meeting after you make the decision. Earlier today at the work session, Wheeler noted when they try to pass a resolution, well maybe we should bring in the stakeholders and not wait to the end of the meeting. This has got to stop. And then how do the public supposed to know what you're going to have at the rules committee, the transportation advisory board meetings? How does the public say, oh, I better get up over there? Or how will they see this information beforehand so they can say, this is what I think? I, I can only say this is what I see here at the time of the meeting. And that's not planning and allowing the public to speak. And one last footnote to add a note is when these meetings are held here and the time, most of the spaces are for, a, a good part is taken from the assembly members blocked out for parking. This is used for a lot of public coming into this big building. You need to move these meetings over to Lusak Library. E easier access, centrally located, and not have this parking scenario where you've got special permits and the public be damned as what's going on. And they're not only coming into, want to attend this meeting, but you've got people up it's eight floors attending different public functions. Thanks. Thank you. Merle. Um, I'm here to, I'm going to support part of what he said. You're taking comments about these bylaws after the fact. You've already passed them. I am, uh, but Mike, the reason I'm here today is I asked Mr. Traney to meet with him a couple of three weeks ago. He said he would, and then at the assembly meeting the other night, I, he said I was going to get an answer to my email that I sent him. I uh, never received an email, so I'm here today. I didn't want to be here today, but part of what I'm here today is is that if you saw the email, and I the last one uh, I sent out the other day, I did uh, get Mrs. Johnson on this thing, and still Miss Gray, or Miss Gray Jackson. But part of what I'm pointing out in here, in, in all of this, and I don't know what these new bylaws that you're looking at have, but you're in them. But the, but some of the provisions in the that you have in the uh, draft bylaws that were in that came with the uh, with the ordinance are just simply unenforceable. They're 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 just terrible, and. That was part was what I was had in my email, and I explained to you why they were there, and nobody's addressed those. But I'll bet you that a lot of these these five or six that you have here today that you've talked about here today, I bet they copied the same mistake, because most of the people are taking those things, particularly when you look at the part about dissolution, dissolving, and you know, the, and the, just the one issue is on that. Most of these councils say if you come to their meeting and you sign in, you're a member. And so you're a member. I signed in 20 years ago. I'm still a member. But when you go to dissolve the community council, you take 75, takes three quarters of all the members. How do you account for that? You don't explain that issue. And that was what I was in here. I don't know why Mr. Traney did not, after he told me twice he would meet with me, did not want to come in here and meet with me. I tried it to Mr. Steele's, my representative over there. Uh, he's aware of this also. I think it's really poor that we're continuing to push through some of these these bylaws like that with these uh, with these obvious errors in them. And I mean, not errors, but they're they're going to be very difficult if 
they're impossible, in fact, to for those provisions to ever be implemented. You know, Tim, it, it's just, I, as I explained, I'm not going to go into it. You, you got an email from me. It's there. Uh, I, I, I don't know what, to, what these, I haven't seen these, these six bylaws, but I would guess that they, they're very, they're very, they probably all have the thing, the same problems that I pointed out, the major problems on dissolution and, and other things that are involved. Uh, ten members to, to call a meeting. How do you, how do you do that? I mean, there's no process to do that. If you call the ten members to call a meeting, uh, the, the bylaws or the, the members, they must state how you, you know, how you do it. You, you have to have a petition. What's the petition look like? And when you give the, the darn thing to whoever's supposed to set up the meetings, how long do they have to set it up, if ever? That's part and parcel of, of all of the things that are in there. And I think those things should be talked about again. I tried to open the discussion, as I said, with, uh, with, with Mr. Traney on this, but, you know, to pass six more of these things on top of the ones you've already passed with probably those flaws in them, I think it's poor. I asked my aide to contact you. You'll be getting contacted. Well, that's she what you said. Both it, of us. It, what you said, but that's what you said two weeks ago. Well, she'll get to you when she gets to you. She's told to set up half an hour meeting with both L.B. Gray Jackson and myself. Well, the problem, the problem we have here is even today, I didn't know that coming. I, like this gentleman said, I didn't know today. All I knew there was going to be a, a meeting and you were going to be here. That's all I was here. I didn't know we were going to see six more of these uh, these uh, things coming up on the on the agenda today. But I will bet you that that's the flaw. I'll bet if I look at those six six deals, I bet you will find the same flaw in them that you that you they're they're not enforceable and, and just don't go anyplace. They just don't have enough words in them to make them to make them do what they're supposed to do. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think you have a valid point in terms of it. If you want to, um, the record keeping aspect and the notification aspect of the councils are tough to enforce it, if at all. And uh, if you want to dissolve a committee council, uh, there's not a very good process. There's not a process uh, that, uh, that you can depend on to try and go from one to two to three. Yes, the code states, the only thing that the code requires is that community council bylaws have a process in there. And most bylaw, most councils require a two-thirds vote of the membership at a meeting. So they, none of the, the councils, the bylaws, don't, they don't all use the same process. For uh, nearly 40 years since councils were established in 1976, the municipality, the assembly, has left it up to councils uh, certain things including how the process to dissolve the council, uh, the terms of service for officers, their qualifications, election of officers. Um, I think what would be, might be difficult to enforce is if the assembly tries to micromanage councils. They are, we, we have to keep in mind, they're voluntary, self-governing nonprofits. So my response to Mr. Akers for a lot of these issues, it's the membership, membership that is responsible for enforcing the majority of the requirements of the bylaws. It is not the municipality's place to micromanage these voluntary self-governing nonprofits. Yes, how do, you, how do you get a list of membership if, uh, if the people who have the database aren't going to give it to you? Barbara. I believe that that is one of the requirements of the duties of the Federation of Community Councils, which we're talking at 1230, and the Federation has the listserv for the community councils. We have a contract with the Federation. That's they're true. they're yeah. required to provide information to the municipality as requested. And some of the information is on their website, including the officers so the officers have to be on the website the federation isn't responsible if the community council doesn't provide the information but if the community councils do provide the information the federation has to publish it and they produce it to us on a quarterly basis in the reports you have comments from some members they refuse to do it what do you do you got to get you got to get well, membership you got to get enough people to. We'll talk after this. There's more. I know. 
This means you're worth it now. Oh, almost 12.30. Thank you for being here.